Hey there, my name is Uma. In this video, I'll be going over the steps that I would take if I were learning how to code again from scratch using all the information that I already know right now. Let's get started. Without wasting any time, this video will be broken down into these categories right here and I will leave the timestamps below. I will leave links to all the resources that I will talk about down in the description as well. There are two ways I can potentially learn how to code. I can either learn one language, preferably an easy and high demand one like Python, be really good at it, become a Python developer and call it a day. Or I can learn the basic programming concepts that apply to a lot, if not all languages, including Python and languages that are not so popular, making me very versatile and marketable. A lot of people today go with the former, learning one language and sticking to it, and I understand why. It takes way less time and Python developers are in high demand right now. The route I would choose to take is a mixture of both. The first thing I would do is learn the basics of programming. The concepts like flow of a program, methods, if statements, while loops, do while loops, variables, syntax errors, compilation errors, and more. These concepts apply to all languages. Links to these concepts are down below. I would play around with these in a language like Python. Why Python, you ask? Well, Python is easy, straightforward, very loosely typed and does not require a lot to start. With a text editor like Notepad and the terminal, you can write and compile Python scripts. Come to think of it, you can write and compile Python scripts with just a terminal, but that might be too complicated for someone who is just beginning. Okay, back to the topic. After learning those concepts, I would go and learn an object-oriented programming language like Java. Listen, I know a lot of people think it's not worth it to learn object-oriented programming today. A lot of people would direct you to learn things like Python or web development, and I agree with that for the most part. Learn Python and learn web development. Those are highly marketable skills right now, and I'll talk about that in a little bit, but you cannot ignore object-oriented programming. The concepts in object-oriented programming span at least six languages, including Python. A lot of systems are written in object-oriented programming languages like Java and c -sharp. They may not be the popular go-to languages today, but they do have their place. They provide structure. Yes, you can get the same structure with other languages that may not be object-oriented, but if you do want to work on any projects that have object-oriented programming structure, you will have to learn it. Nowadays, systems are built using a mixture of both object-oriented languages and scripting languages, so it's not quite dead yet. It's also the basic building block of programming. It's taught in every college and most boot camps. I am all for learning easier languages, that's why we will learn the easier concept first in Python. In technical interviews, you will be asked about object-oriented programming concepts. So unless you want to be a one-language developer, which wouldn't be ideal, I would highly suggest you learn object-oriented programming. I would pick a language like Java because it's popular and easy to learn compared to the other object-oriented languages like c -sharp. I would start by learning the data types and the data structures. For data types, I would focus on integers, floats, shorts, strings, and learn the difference between primitive and non-primitive data types. And for data structures, I would focus on the basic ones like arrays, array list, link list, stack, trees, queues, and all the other ones that I forgot to mention. After that, I would learn object-oriented programming concepts like classes, abstract classes, and interfaces. After that, I would proceed to learn the core object-oriented programming principles, which are inheritance, encapsulation, abstraction, and polymorphism. This is where I would learn things like method overloading and method overriding. Now, could I have learned these concepts using an easier language like Python? Yes, but Python doesn't really keep you accountable and doesn't reinforce the concepts that you've learned. For example, you can write a equals to four in Python and that's it. The interpreter will figure out what a is and assign the proper data type to it. You don't have to worry about it. In a language like Java, you have to specify what a is. Is it an integer? Is it a long? Is it a short? Is it a string? It'll keep you accountable to using what you've learned. A similar process happens when you're instantiating a data structure. An array in Python is written like this. In Java, you have to specify what you are storing in the array and create an instance of the object like this, which is a concept by itself in object-oriented programming. I would work on one or two projects using what I've learned from object-oriented programming. An example of one of those projects would be to design a class or making a tic-tac-toe game in Java. Yes, it is possible. Here are a list of other things that you could work on to improve your knowledge of object-oriented programming. I would then move on to learn algorithms. These are the algorithms that are used in programming interviews and in everyday life. 
I would learn recursion first because most of the algorithms are done recursively. I would then learn the searching algorithms like depth first search, breadth first search, binary search, then the sorting algorithms like med sort, quick sort, selection sort, insertion sort, and all the other ones. This website, visualalgo.net, is awesome in visualizing all the algorithms and data structures that I have mentioned. You pick what you want to learn, say it's sorting. It has a drop down menu of everything related to sorting, from the algorithms to the time complexity. Say we pick selection sort. We can create our own example, so it's easy for us, or we can use a random one. It then walks through the code line by line, showing us what's happening in real time. This is an awesome resource to use. When that's done, I would probably take a break and come back to it after a while. I would then move on to web development, learn HTML, CSS, and some JavaScript, work on a few projects and move on to more complicated web development frameworks like React or Angular. I would work on a few projects here as well, starting with small projects like a basic calculator and building my way up. I would also be learning JavaScript or TypeScript. It would probably suck and I would be on one project for about two or three weeks, but I'll remind myself that programming is an abstract concept. And like all other new skills, it'll take time for me to learn it. I would learn the concepts as I go and eventually learn Redux, which is a state management tool for React. After this, I would work on a project that involves a database or an API created by me or created by someone else. This will help me round up most of my programming skills that are practical to real life scenarios. I would continue working on projects because the one thing today's Uma has learned is that people want to see what you've done with the languages and the tech stack that you say you know. Experience always wins, and the only way to get experience is by getting a job. But until you get a job, you need to show what you're capable of. Knowing React is good, but can I see what you've built with React? I would start an online portfolio with most of my projects, even if they're ugly, because I know I am trying my best at that current moment, and I will get better with time and practice. I would also learn Git and upload all of my source code to GitHub. It is at this point that I will start looking for a programming job. It doesn't matter what it is and what the tech stack is. I have learned the basics of programming and object-oriented programming with some projects under my belt as well, so I have some experience coding. For the stuff I don't know, I will learn on the job because believe it or not, we all learn on the job. As I look for a job, I would continue working on projects that I find interesting while at the same time learning new tech stack. I would join coding communities and work on hackathons. Even after I find a job, I would continue working on projects and doing hackathons so I stay up to date with my skills and I learn more. I will try to work on something that excites me and challenges me to learn something new with projects like mobile app development, machine learning, and the other countless branches of programming. I would definitely remember to take breaks as needed because I am in control and going at my own pace. A pace that is comfortable for me where I am and not comparing myself to others. I would remember to reach out and get help as needed, reminding myself that no one knows everything. Even the best developers forget things and Google stuff all the time. I would take it easy on myself and above all, I would enjoy the process and enjoy my coding journey. That's it for this one. If you have any advice that you would give to your younger self about your coding journey, feel free to leave it in the comments. If you're interested in learning why Google Maps is so efficient, click on this video right here. And if you wanna to subscribe to the channel, click right here. Thanks for watching and see you next time.